Hello and welcome back to more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where last time we played through the Flower Cup on 50cc, and today we'll be playing through the Star Cup on 50cc, and we're going to be using Peach. We also unlocked a new Carlos episode, and what did we unlock? We unlocked the Teddy Buggy. So we're going to go ahead and use this Teddy Buggy, since we just unlocked last time, and we'll go ahead and use the Monster Tires with the Parafoil. Here are the stats. And once again, we're going to make sure that Smart Steering and Auto Acceleration are indeed disabled. And so without further ado, let's dive into the Star Cup on 50cc. Let's do this. Okay, and thus begins the Star Cup, which, for those of you who don't know, is probably my favorite cup in the entire- mm, uh, well, I'll reassess the answer to that question uh, after we beat this- uh, after we play through all, all 12 cups for the first time. Uh, or not for the first time, but after, after we play through all the 12 cups in this LP once, then I'll reassess, my, reassess the question of which one is my favorite, because I think- I think definitely out of the original Mario Kart 8 cups being, you know, Mushroom, Flower, Star, Special, I think the, uh, the Star Cup's definitely my favorite, but out of all of them, I don't know, Shell Cup's pretty awesome too, I definitely really like the Shell Cup. I think, I think from memory, out of the, out of the, uh, new cups versus the retro cups, uh, Star Cup's the best of the, of the new ones, and then Shell Cup's the best of the old ones, or the retro style cups. Out of the DLC cups, I have to play through, through them again to remember which one I enjoy the most. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer on the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure out of all of them, Star Cup will probably come the closest to my favorite. Cause I just, I just really like all the tracks, even, even the like, I'm not, Electrodome won't make any of my top 10 lists in terms of, like, favorite Mario Kart tracks ever, but the other ones will. Sun Sunshine Airport, I love this track so much. This, uh, Dolphin Shoals also, and Mar Mount Wario is, I don't, I don't even have to think about it, it's my favorite track in the whole game. It's undoubtedly, I adore Mount Wario so much. Oh yeah, Sunshine Airport, uh, so first of all, uh, the, the, uh, you probably could have guessed that this this cup was my favorite because it is like when I when I recorded Mario Kart 8 gameplay for the 2021 preview early this year, I, I legit just went to the Star Cup, and I just played it because that's the one that's like well if I'm gonna play any cup I'm gonna play the one that I like the most so I played the Star Cup, and that's that's the one I showed footage from I showed uh, footage from Sunshine Airport and Dolphin Shoals I don't think I showed any from Electro Dome or Mount Wario, but I definitely showed footage from the first two cor uh, courses in this cup. Oh uh, yeah, but this I just. I, I don't really know if I can quantify it. I just, I really like the aesthetic of this. I like the fact that you can see the planes, like, flying up above and below you. Uh, I like, I like that you go through the whole, like, you go through the airport itself, the runways, uh, going around all the, all the luggage and just underneath the planes, and you can, you, you even fly inside a plane at one point. Um, and that's as fine as you'll head of my way, which is unfortunate. I think it might also be the fact that I have a lot of, I know it sounds weird to say, but I have a lot of nostalgia for airports. I think it's just because... I have a lot of nostalgia for all the summer vacations that I took when I was a kid. So, you know, going to Hawaii, going to visit family, uh, going to New York City, things like that. And obviously, you know, you have to get to the airport to actually fly to those locations. So I have a lot of, a lot of nostalgia for, like, you know, being at the airport, like, anticipation of we're going to get on the flight and fly somewhere awesome. I guess I just, that, that might, that, that might play, in, if I can speak properly, that might play into it a little bit for why I, I, why I enjoy the aesthetic of this level so much. But I also like this shot right here where you can just see the whole level, the whole course in front of you as you glide down. Just... Really cool to see, uh, but uh, but obviously this is just one small piece of the uh, of the Star Cup. So uh, I will be sure to talk about all of them uh, the further we go throughout this. But for now, I believe we are victorious. Also, I see those stupid little Pianta people to the side. I think they're called Piantas, and it's just every time I see them now, it's just gonna bring back PTSD of freaking Super Mario Sunshine. I swear to God. So I'd like to talk about how gorgeous this course is, but sadly I've been reminded of Super Mario Sunshine, now I need to rant about how crap that game is. Uh, for those of you who are joining the channel for the first time, uh, I don't like Super Mario Sunshine at all. I had heard from people before I played it that it was like the one of the best Mario games ever created, so I was excited. I mean, on paper, I, that was a green shell. On paper, I thought I was going to love it because uh, one thing that you might know about me 
is that I, I love beach levels, just the aesthetic of the beach in, in levels. I'm, that's, that's why that's why I love Seaside Kingdom so much in Super Mario Odyssey. That's why I love Sonic Cartographer so much. Well, I mean, I love Sonic, the Sonic Cartographer in, in Common Evolve for other reasons, like just the fact that it's a massive open world playground. I love that. But the aesthetic wise, I definitely adore that aspect of it. I also love Dolphin Shoals for that reason, because I love, while it's not strictly a beach environment, it is a very tropical uh, landscape with you can the, the rushing river going into the sea. Uh, seeing like all, all the ocean life, just the the the, the, the colorful corals all around you, just I, I really like the aesthetic of this level as well. So on paper, the idea of exploring an entirely tropical resort as the setting for a Mario game with the the whole flood jetpack thing seems like a pretty cool idea, right? Because that could make for some pretty creative platforming. What no, but the thing that no one told me about that game before I played it is that uh. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's bad for us off, but also that the controls are just, I think they were made by two-year-olds, because they, they're some of the stiffest, most unresponsive, most unforgivingly frustrating controls I've ever had to deal with in any video game ever, and I, I, I still have not edited those episodes of me finishing the game, because I just, I, I just, it's just pain, e even just, like, editing the footage is just pain, because it just reminds me of the, the horror, I, the horror, the horrific time that I spent actually playing that terrible game, um, and honestly, like, some games you can play, you're like, okay, this this wasn't for me, but I guess, yeah, someone could love this. Like, there's there's games that I play where I'm like, okay, that wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but I, I definitely see there's a lot to this that people could love, and I can see how this could be someone's favorite game. No! I have no idea how you can play Super Mario Sunshine and think that it's, like, the one of the best games ever made. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, and I didn't even 100% it. I, if, if I had to actually sit there and get all the stupid little blue coins and do all the stupid hidden missions and everything that you can find... I, I might have actually jumped out of a window by now, because I swear that that game is made to punish you constantly. Just just for playing it, it's like, oh, you want to play me? <laughs> well, screw you, buddy. I don't, I don't want you to play this game, so I'm going to punish you for trying to do so. Yeah, that's, I, I get that. Because I, 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 I just, all, I've, all I ever heard prior to the, um, that's, that's an unfortunately time spiny shell. All I ever heard prior to me playing it for the first time on 3D All-Stars was that it was it was a great game. And even when I uploaded the first episode, people were talking about how they don't think the controls are unresponsive and they think they're fine. Um, and I just... I, I don't get it, man. I really don't get the the adoration for Sunshine. But, you know, to each their own at the end of the day, I guess in terms of, like, what games you love. But I just, like, usually, like I said, usually when it comes to a game that I wasn't a huge fan of, I can at least say, okay, there, there is quality here. I can see that there is, like, merits to this game that I just am not a fan of. I don't, I, I don't see any of that for Sunshine. I don't get it. Anyway, uh, next race. So, like I said earlier, the Electrodrome, or Electro... Is it Electrodome or Electrodrome? I think it's Electrodrome, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as, as nicely as Electrodome does, but either way. I'm probably still going to call it Electrodome, uh, just because it just will roll off the tongue uh, most most uh, nicely, but... And, and anyway, uh, like I said, this has never been one of my favorites, uh, which I, I mean, I guess sounds odd since I said earlier the Starcraft was one of my favorites, but when, when your other three courses are so awesome... I think it, I think that that more than makes up for the one that's kind of like eh, because you know this. Like I said, it's not. It's just like it's not, I don't hate the course. There are some levels in this game that I really just don't. Maybe hates too strong of a word, but really, I'm not a, like I don't like playing them. I think they're very uninspired, and I think they could be done better. And I'll sure to talk about when we get to them. But there's no. I don't think there's any course in this game that I like actually truly despise with a fire passion or anything like that. Uh, but there are some that I'm like, yeah, that could have been better. And this, this, this is more like a middle of the road. Like the, the, I'd say the worst that our course gets in this game is like, eh, not a. I, I didn't really like it all that much. Whereas this one's kind of like, eh, I, I don't, I don't hate playing it. I don't love playing it. It's just kind of like, eh, it was, it was, it was fine. It was all right. Uh, but like I said, compared to the other three, well, when the other three courses in your cup are so good, that one makes up for it. But what I will say is that this, uh, playing through this course again, the aesthetic of it very much reminds me of a game called It Takes Two, or at least the the final level of It Takes Two, which if you never played it, you absolutely should, because at, as as it stands right now, It Takes Two is my game of the year for 2021. E even including Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which was a phenomenal, well, which was a, a great game. I don't want to push it to phenomenal, but it was a great game. Uh, 
even including that, it takes two easily outstrips it. It takes two is the most... One of the most delightfully creative, innovative, fun, and wholesome video games I have played. Or, I guess, new new games that I've played in a long time. Like, I played that with, with Neil, uh, Group Unicorn 71, and we just had a blast. Like, it was, it was just... I know it sounds lame to say, but it was just fun. Like, it was just... It was just genuine fun from start to finish. They had the, the the creativity on display with the sheer amount of gameplay types and environments and puzzle mechanics and just everything, everything the the sheer amount of variety that game had in terms of the types of gameplay it had and the environments and like the the, the core beating heart of the story. Just I we just really loved playing it. It was so much fun to explore the levels, to find all the mini games, to play all the side quests if you can call them that, solve the puzzles together, just working together as a team to get everything done. It was it was a blast to play, and I really recommend if you if you haven't played it to to find a friend or someone some someone you know that you that would want to play the game and playing it with them because it is it is like I speak unironically when I say game of the year 2021. It is I don't think the only thing that I think could possibly outstrip it at this point is either Greatest Attorney Chronicles, which at the time of recording is not out yet, but at the time of release it obviously will be, uh, or Halo Infinite. Those are the only two things that I think can, can even come close to it. But even then, it's it's going to be a tough battle to beat out. It takes two. Yeah, the reason I bring it up is because the the final level is kind of a kind of an uh, electro style dance scenario where, where you're putting together a, a concert performance kind of thing. So that the aesthetic of the final set of levels there really reminds me of of this as well. So that, that's why I brought it up. But yeah, play it takes two, everybody. It's phenomenal. Anyway, let's go on to the final race of the cup, which is also my favorite track in the entire game. So, you may be wondering why this is my favorite track in the game. Well, first of all, it's visually stunning. I It, it continues to, am to amaze me how absolutely gorgeous this game is. I just, I really love the aesthetic style of this, uh, of this level of, of like, skiing down. I mean, just the, the ice effects, the snow effects, just the light. I, I really love how this course looks. But, of course, if you know me, I've said perpetual, I've, 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 made, I've made a point of saying in the past that, uh, you need more than visual flair to impress me, and this course does. I think it's just... I think it's just a sense of, like, I, I, I'm always a fan of courses that feel, I talk about this in Mario Kart courses that feel like an adventure, uh, in the sense that, like, you start from one location and you, and you end up in another location. Because the way this track looks is that, or the way this track works is it's not a, it's not a typical three-lap uh, course where you go around a circle three times. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a three-section course where you start at one place, you end at another place. So you start off in the helicopter, which is awesome. You jump out of the helicopter, which is even more awesome. Then, you, then the first section is you skiing down the mountain, and then the second section is you going through the, the cave and the more industrial part of the, uh, of, of the level. And then the third section is kind of the forest concluded with the final ski slope area, which I'll, you'll see in a second. So I just, I just, I'm always a fan of courses that feel like an adventure, so whether you're, because obviously, you know, things like, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't strictly apply to three section courses, because, you know, things like, uh, Luigi Circuit, Mario Circuit, Mario Kart Stadium, things like that, like, those feel like courses, those, those feel like, racetracks right you can you can see the circle uh, or not circle but you can see that it's, it's an enclosed loop and you feel like you're just racing on a track whereas things like uh, twisted mansion or shy guy falls or coconut mall or dk stump and things like that those feel like adventures where you're like you're exploring a, a, a haunted mansion you're exploring the mall you're exploring this you're you're skiing down the mountain you're doing these things like the uh, courses that feel like the you're not just racing you're like you're driving around and exploring this really really gorgeous and awe-inspiring environment and just i just those are the courses that are typically going to be my favorites are the ones where it, it doesn't feel like you're you're racing around a predetermined track is kind of i don't know if i'm explaining myself well enough but uh, that's kind of where my my head's at with that so that's why i love this course so much and it's just you know the visual style on top of the music which is awesome and just the the sense of the, the sense of adventure you have from starting off at the top of the mountain, jumping out of the helicopter, skiing down the mountains, going to the cave, the water, uh, I, I said yeah, the waterfall, the dam, the forest, and then one final epic ski slope down the mountain, shooting off on the speed of sound through the rings. I, I don't know, man. I just I really love Mount Warrior. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, but I guess it just makes me curious to ask, what would you all say is your favorite? Uh, I guess because I, I asked earlier, what what's your favorite cup and what's your favorite track in Mario Kart uh, 8 Deluxe? If if you play the game before. What would you say is your favorite cup and your favorite track out of the game? Because right now my answer would be Star Cup is my favorite cup, and uh, uh, tentative to, depending on the change on when after after another playthrough of all the cups. And my favorite track is easily Mount Wario, but I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about that. Anyway, 
Let's view the results. You have collected 90 coins, a new vehicle customization option has been unlocked, so we're going to check that out next episode. But of course, for now, that will do it for now. Also, it turns out it actually was called Electrodrome, not Electrodome, so that's that. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. I hope to catch you all tomorrow for some more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Goodbye.